My dad fought him for his whole lifetime. This was all over the country. The country was in such a, a mess, you know, and there was a change going on. And them kids come and fished with us and went to jail here. You know, uh, it, it was a continual battle. All the game wardens and, you know, all the sheriffs and everybody come and arrested us. And they gassed us, they gassed us, all of us, you know. And kids, little kids, everybody, you know. So we took it to them right here on the river. You have to fight. You have to fight for your right. You have to go to jail. It's too bad that's the way it is. There's people still locked up in jail yet that was fighting for their right. Now we're managers. And so now we can bring people together with us all working together. There's a lot of good things that happen. This series is the first to take you inside Indian country. We'll visit indigenous movements around the world. We'll see how they're pounding the table, rattling the cage, shaking things up like we did during the fish wars. Come with me as I explore the First Nations of the world, as I hear their history and the history that they're making now, as I hear their stories of hardship, of hope that we have and the laughter, you know, how these people can laugh with so much tragedy around them. This is a story of survival right here. This is our land. This is our resource. This is our culture. This is who we are. This is Indian country. Today, climate change, also known as global warming. They're swimming for their lives. Behind me is the Arctic Sea. With every wave that comes in, a part of native Alaska goes with it. In my lifetime, three quarters of a mile was the shoreline out there. Today, the ocean is right up to the barrier. We're sitting on a erosion barrier along the Arctic Sea here. I see the sandbags here lined up, but is it really going to help our village or protect our people, you know? This is the front line for that issue, and I'm going to be here talking to our people, listening to their stories. They're the ones who can tell the real stories of what has taken place up here. It's probably one of the biggest issues that's facing our villages up here in, in the top of the world. And it's facing all of us throughout all of the world. Wow, look at the erosion along here. Boy, this ocean is mean. I've never seen water like this before. It's got so much erosion to it. It's eating this whole shoreline away. I might be freezing right now, but they just had the warmest September ever. You know, that tells us that, you know, there's changes going on. I'm sitting here today witnessing this great hunt up here for the bowhead whale. They're hunting for sustainability of their lives and their people. They bring that animal to shore and it's already divided up to all the families. William Hobson, Charlie, Nancock, and Delbert Rexford. Did I miss anybody? 
Yes, today is a good day. <laughs> Frank Jr. and this is Indian country. Actually, it's Inupiat country. This is Upyavik, the native village of Bear, Alaska, the home of the great Wayland culture. This is the top of the world. You can't go any further without falling into the ocean. And that's the problem. The Arctic Ocean is getting closer and closer every day. It's climate change, also known as global warming. It's hitting our villages up here hard, like a big wind off the Arctic Sea, and it's eroding the shoreline. All these villages up and down the coast are being eroded away, disappearing with every wave that comes in. But you know what? We ain't going away. They're here and they're holding on. They're going out and getting whales like they always done. And they're hanging on at the top of the world. Day this is, man, man, beautiful kids. And, uh, you know, all these people, all this big circle of celebration that they're having, they're feeding everybody. Etox over there, that's his, the Edwardson crew, that's his family. The Edwardson family invited us all here for this great celebration today. And their flags are flying, the whaling flags hosting. So this is, you know, all the people from all of these villages here. While our ice is melting out there in the Arctic Ocean, they're all having this great celebration here. Did we miss anybody? So if everybody got one on the second round, say yeah! blanket toss celebration that's going on up here in the Arctic Circle. And while the climate is changing, this celebration goes on and they're celebrating for the whaling season. And this celebration is all about the whales. And uh, even though the climate is changing, while our villages or some of them are getting closer and closer to the seas and eroding into the sea, we still have these celebrations. Life goes on. And this this great blanket is made of seal skin. 
And everybody does it. Look at them. They're having fun, boy. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do it. And maybe not. <laughs> This is like the Premier League. They know what they're doing. Look, look at these kids. They're 20 feet in the air. Look what they're doing. <laughs> they look great. And if they fall, somebody's gonna catch them. And this is what it's all about. The community catches them as they fall. It represents everything that's going on here. Everybody's got everybody's back in this community. Nobody falls without being caught. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. We're still on third round. We got more Kwok, Maktak, and Akhiktak, and we got Anakhlip. So come on down, come up. We're for everybody now. <laughs> this is Tony Edwardson. He's the captain of our whaling crew here in Barrow, Alaska. And what does it take to get a whale? It takes a, a lot of effort, and the uh, most important part is uh, getting the crew all together. One thing I've learned is um, Best thing to do is take care of your crew. Yeah, yeah. You take care of your yeah. crew, the crew stays together. Yeah. Just try and provide them what they need. Mm -hmm. You know, whaling is, it's tough, but you know, it's awesome though. <laughs> it's an awesome feeling. <laughs> How far out do you go? Do you go further, being as the weather is changing and climate now? Uh, uh, yeah, the ice, the ice conditions, um, it took us about, we were about seven miles out. Oh, boy. About, about seven miles out. Yeah. And then it was a lot of work chipping the ice because the pressure ridges were so high. Wow. This year, okay. Um, and some of that ice wasn't very safe to pull up a whale. Yeah. Okay. So we had to look for the best spot to pull up whales. It took us about, about three weeks to get our trail done. Oh, boy. Yeah. So... It was a lot of time and effort. Yeah. But out of that trail, we were able to land our wheel. We go out and make our trail, find our location, then we come yeah, back, get all our gear. Mama. And before we leave, we have um, we, we have the blessing of the boat to, yeah. Yeah. for a safe hunt and protection right. from, from the good Lord. We ask yep. for yep. protection. It's a real spiritual thing for all of us. Yeah. I think that's what keeps us all together. Yeah. The, Eskimos have adopted Christianity as their faith, and we have our version of it, but nevertheless, we're older than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> How important, Tony, is this Whalen to your big community this, and your celebration? It's very important. because. There is a number of families that can't afford to go to the store and buy steaks. Right. You know, yeah. This is one way of providing to the people that that can't afford to go right. to the store and buy steak meat yeah. or yeah. Yeah. Right. whatever that you know. And they they really like the whale because it's um, it's very nutritious. Okay. Yeah. Keeps us warm in the winter. Yeah. That food just warms you up. You know. Even though it's cold yeah. when you eat yeah. it, but you know, it's very nutritious. Yeah. So you share, you share with with everyone when you bring your whale in. Yep, yep. Oh boy. It's all shared with everyone. And I see this community here now. Yeah. I mean, all the people come together. And all the people that come from the Northwest Arctic Borough, yeah. you know, from the Northwest. Yeah. They come from all over Fairbanks, Anchorage. Wow. Everybody. Everybody just comes here. This celebration. Yes. Yep. How long does it last? Well, um, on this whale, since there's 13 more whales to catch this fall. Oh, boy. Well, we plan to give this whole whale away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we're fortunate that our ancestors regulated the whaling in the manner 
of conservation. Exactly. Yeah. And this is uh, the whale that uh, we care so, so much about, and uh, it's our job to pass it on. Yep. Yes. In 1971, I uh, incorporated the, the Alaskan Eskimo Whaling Commission so we can self-regulate. And we have tighter management than ever before. The bullhead whale may be the whale that outlives the rest of the whales under our management. Are you going to get up on the blanket? I, yeah, that, the, that's the best thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a real professional blanket. It's only eight, eight by eight. Oh, so. boy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> that's, that's what we say. Hey! hey. Oh, hey! <laughs> now the blanket toss. Are you going to do that? Well, uh, I, I, I don't have much of a choice. <laughs> we caught the whale. <laughs> so that's your celebration? Yeah, that's the celebration. And in my younger days, I used to take a float and, and jump around with a float. Seals can float up in the air. <laughs> That's the good old days. Yeah, it's the good old days. Standing here freezing, but out there somewhere, they're hunting the bullhead whales, and they got to be cold. So I'm going to go in now and get in the car. <laughs> Have you noticed any changes since the climate change? Ah, uh, yes. We've noticed every year. We notice that the ice is um, it's it's not here very long, it gets too warm too quick, and then it, it tends to uh, thaw the trail, and it makes it very um, um, dangerous for being on the ice. You, you'll come across some black holes. Black, where the black holes will be is where the young ice is just not ridged up, okay? Young ice, just flat ice. Yeah. And then where those areas will um, eventually thaw out first the current from underneath yep. melting it and also from the sun. Boy. Hunting in younger ice is dangerous. It has made it more risky for us out there because of the polar ice pack is bigger than the, the six months old ice that is on our shores. And we have to run for our own safety uh, to, to go to anchor ice. Climate change is forthcoming, and it's upon us today. The global warming is really affecting us. Yeah. And then our summers are a lot longer. It, it even affects the ice cellars. The ice cellars are, because the, the summers are so long, it's thawing out um, the permafrost further and further down. Oh. Okay? And then that affects the ice cellars where we store the whale meat. Oh, wow. We have lost three quarters of a mile of beach in my lifetime in Barrow. So Barrow is going to have to move probably 40 miles south. That is surely going to happen. Barrow will be gone in probably the next 50 years. This, this village will be gone. We have 50 years left in Barrow. And we're going to have to move up to, to higher grounds. What is it like to move a village? Well, uh, when the nature does this, we don't have a choice but to move. <laughs> well, we have six villages that need to move within the next five to nine years. And there are 32 villages right now who are considered threatened by permafrost, sea ice melt, 
there will be 191 of our 229 villages that will have to relocate. There are more villages recognized than that, but there are 229 that are inhabited all year round. So 191 of those villages will have to move in the next 50 years or so. And each village is responsible for funding its relocation. Villages are so small they can't meet the cost-benefit analysis. If they're large enough to meet the cost-benefit analysis, they don't have the funds to do the matching funds, which are required by law. So there's all kinds of legal barriers. It gets extremely frustrating, especially for Kivalina and Shishmaraf. Uh, Shishmaraf has known it had to move for 30 years now. Kivalina, well, it's 31. Kivalina, 26. And in the case of Shishmaraf, it's very difficult to get, like their clinic is falling down, but no one wants to build a new clinic because everyone knows they have to move. In a lot of communities, the families rely heavily still on our traditional foods. And so if we didn't have that, we don't know what we'll do. And one of the things about climate change that's so scary is it's impacting all the marine mammals we eat. Oh, yeah. Mm. Man, that is the one I want right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This is for the community to help themselves. Oh. This is free for all. Yeah. Anybody They'll who has and... enough enough gumption to to go help themselves, so yeah. it's uh, it's open. It's open to the public process, and that's a real gummy, but it's it'll hold you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it stand up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this Nubia Indian here. Edwards <laughs> one The whale is eaten. With its blood, it pickles. The blood of the whale pickles the matka. And then we put it in a container and for about three weeks, and then it's really it's, pickled. It, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's just right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, and so uh, uh, so it takes the whole community to keep us together. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yep. Vicky, how does climate change, how does this affect whaling? The sea ice isn't as strong as it used to be, so they have to be a lot more careful. And are animals disappearing and, and affected by the, the climate change? Yeah. What we're trying to do here at APU is figure out how to help these communities move it's a really interesting, challenging place to be, but in it I see a lot of opportunity to transform our villages again into self-reliant communities. So we're looking to figure out some of those solutions because as Inupak people, we're not supposed to bring up problems without having ways of fixing it. But when I was young, the old log cabins had little windmills attached to them. If we would build our houses with composting toilets, you wouldn't have sewage lagoons, you wouldn't need a sewage system. And if each house was energy mm -hmm. efficient as a unit, you wouldn't need to build a power plant. That would take millions of dollars off the cost of relocating communities. And so we've been looking at alternative building techniques, energy. I'm a big fan of hempcrete, but unfortunately, it grows in the subarctic, but it's illegal to grow unless you get permits from USDA. Oh, wow. So I'm trying to figure out who knows somebody high enough yeah. in USDA <laughs> to help us get permits. It, it, it's, uh, it's blood, it pickles. The blood of the world.
with its blood, it pickles. You're really hanging on on the top of the world. Look at this big celebration you are having. And we're going to continue. We are the people of the Pleistocene, and we're not about ready to move because this is, this is who we are. We're Inupets. <laughs> This is uh, my ancestors' dominion. This mound is about 3,000 years old, and my people have been living here at this location for 3,000 years. This was occupied by maritime Inupiat. They lived off this land and it provided for them. The Arctic has been populated for a very long time. And this place is at Pernik. And this is uh, where our ancestors built. And his name is Kekpaushin. This was a very spiritual place. He was a great shaman that took care of all of his people. He was so powerful, he even had polar bear pets as his, as his uh, oh. servants. <laughs> and this is a place where everything was brought to the people here. We had caribou, ducks, birds, eggs, everything that the nature provided here. Mama, mama, manna. And we still hunt and fish, whale, and uh, and this is our birthright. Mama, to to what? Gentle pop of the whale. Real or dirt. 300 pounds left for the taking. Somebody with the tools can help themselves. So anybody who has tools can come in and help themselves and get their fair share, depending on the willing. Itak, you're probably one of the most famous Eskimo fighters. And you and I have been fighting for the last 40, 50 years together. And me for the treaty rights in the lower 48, and you for preserving our country up here for our people. And how do you feel when all of them whales are divided among your people? Like you, you've been doing that for thousands of years. Well, this is uh, the completion of the, our life cycle. This is what we're supposed to do. We don't waste anything. We don't do it for profit. We do it to perpetuate the Inupiat culture and the cycle that we are gifted with. Right. Now the Eskimo is becoming endangered. Uh -huh. This way of life that we have is being endangered to meet America's energy needs. Right. Uh, the Arctic Ocean has been warming up. The waves got bigger as the water comes in. We now have about 128 villages threatened because of global warming. Right. Etak, how much of your beaches are being lost every day? Every day. We have about uh, a million cubic feet of lateral transport from the westerly side gets lost every season million cubic feet of gravel. And it gets deposited to the barrier islands to the west. There's no see, beaches. No beaches, no yeah. beaches. I see there's no beaches. Yeah. Etak, in your lifetime, you were taken away from your villages here and taken to the western schools to get educated. And now I see in the global warming, the villages are being taken away. Yeah. 
what happened in my lifetime is I was transported out. We went to the school without the love of our parents. We were a number. My, my government educational number was 113 was my number. It marked all of my clothes, just like any good prison. And today, uh, things have gotten a little better because we own our own school system. We now have capacity to fight and will reverse itself. In the lower 48, we hear so much of the global warming. And here we are up here with you now, yeah. the front line. Well, uh, 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 global warming has a world-class effect, but the greatest victims is going to be the people all along the world's coastline, where 88% of the world's population are going to are. be affected. Right. So the nice thing about world disasters, they're inclusive. <laughs> This is my friend, Keith Johnson, president, president of the Whalen Commission at Macaw. And today is a great day oh, for us. Billy, it's, it's awesome. Day. Yep. It's awesome to see this. Yep. To see and witness all of this great, important day. Yeah, and I'm just so proud to be here and yep. to see this and witness. And us together. Absolutely. Boy. Yes. Staying together, Billy. Really. Staying together. Staying you know? together. All our yep. wars yep. Go, yep. go through. Yep to maintain our, our heritage. Yep, and our life, for sustainability of yes. who we are. Oh, absolutely. Yep. yep. <sighs> Isn't this great? This is great. And see those little, this the, is great. The, the little children. kids up there? On there. Oh, boy. That's where they come from, yep. and they're right there. Yep, they're right there, looking right on their, yep. their grandmas and yep. grandpas. And My grandfather and heard this story, you know, he was playing on the, on the tail of, of his father's last whale in 1907. <laughs> yeah. And his and uh, his mother says, "Get off, get off that whale." And my great grandfather, Babusid, said, "No, no, that's his. That's where he comes from. That's where he's going to be, and that's his. Yep. So he can do that." And so I see it here today, yep. grandchildren. That's right. On the whale. And you said that whale is still alive. Still alive. To all of his people. Yes. They're yes. eating and subsisting. Yes. Boy, look at that. Huh? And I see the pride in the family, and then the little ones, the grandchildren, they see they wear their, their grandfather's flag yeah, yeah. that symbolizes yep. that here they are, the whalers. Yeah. And I, I think that flag is just absolutely wonderful. It's just beautiful. It hasn't been easy for the Macaws, no. you know, to exercise your treaty, and, and it hasn't yeah. been an easy, no. easy time for the Macaw no. people. No. Billy, you're so right, you know, how you know our people are suffering. You know our yeah. people want this, you know, yeah. and and and, and the, it's so hard. And for me to see this yeah. now, yeah. all of the support of the community, all the support of, of this whole this whole area here, is what we need. Yeah. And we need to have that at home, and it's so so needed there. Yeah. But the battles that we have, you yeah. know, the people oh, yeah. around us. Yeah. The racist attitudes, yep. Yep. they have no understanding of of this. No. Yeah. Our culture and our spiritual life. Yeah, this food, connected. this food, this medicine for us. Yeah. And they just want to stop us. Yep. This continuum has been going on for quite some time. We had to litigate to protect our own interests. There are some good environmentalists also. But uh, this is a, a, a message to the animal-loving, people-hating environmentalists. We're not about ready to stop our culture. I know it was emotional today when we saw that whale come in. You know, yeah, I can just, just feel the, the spirit. I just, you yeah. know, it's so emotional. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, when I touched the first whale, yeah. first bowhead whale, I just said my prayer. Real silent prayer for, yeah. Yeah. and thanking it yeah. for everybody. The last few days we've had lots of prayers here come oh, together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these people, and they, 
they yeah. they welcomed us yeah. here. So right. important yeah. that they wanted oh, us to witness boy. what we see here today. Yes. And, you know, and when we get all together, supporting indigenous people in the way of life of whalers. Yep. I think that's what I'm feeling here today. Yeah, yep. yep. okay, slide okay, over. okay. Yep. we got to get out of the way. God damn, we damn near got, we just about got run over here. Yeah, Please I tell you, when they're moving that yeah. blubber, you know, they're, gotta they're, they're a, a Give them a lot of room. That's right. Give them a lot of room. Does it impress you how this, the butchering is so efficient and, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah. the working together and the, yeah, uh, it, the, the carving and splitting it up between the families. You know, they have their butchering crew, they, they have their support crew all ready in place, and they even have a, a man sharpening sharpening their, their blades, their cutting lamp. And knives. I see them over yeah. there where they're, yeah. they're gonna look like they're gonna yeah. cook some. Yeah. And it doesn't take them long, you know, it doesn't take them long, and that's, and that's what it's all about. They know what they're supposed to do. They know how it's all divided up. It's, mm -hmm. it's already divided up before it even reaches the beach. They yeah. know it. It's just a matter of getting it out and doing it. I know we just about yeah. got run over again. Again, yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll just take one and, and go. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just grab a little bit. Here they come. We've been here with all of our people here. Yes. And they've been welcoming and honoring and praying and no matter where we go, it's just yeah. like a yeah. warm, loving yep. family yeah. of indigenous people who want a whale. Yep. It's yep. our way of life, yep. our way identity. Life. It's so important, and they know that. I'm so proud and honored yep. as a whaling family where yep. I come from yep. to see this. Yep. And for those whalers to share that with yep. me, that means so much. Yep. And these little kids, <laughs> <laughs> these little guys. I, are I love right them. Here. They're on solid ground. Yep. They, their identity, they're not going to get lost in this 21st century yep. as numbers. Right. They stand on the solid yep. ground as yep. whalers, their identity yep. as native people, yep. indigenous people. Yep. And boy, That's powerful. Look at them. Yep. That's powerful. What does subsistence mean to you? Oh, my. You know, it's, it means everything to our, our songs and our dances that we have. The spiritualness of, of cleansing one's body subsistence whalers, subsistence brings all of that riches to, to our soul, yep. to our soul. And it, uh, yeah, sure, it's nutrition and the omega-3s. The, the, yeah. And to be able to bring that food to our people who need it, who don't have jobs, and they need to fill their freezers, yep. what better way yep. of reminding us who we are as native subsistence hunters, like what you see here. Yep. It feeds the people, giving to our people, yep. subsistence. Yep. That's subsistence. what we're all about. That's we us. Wanna, yes. That's who we are. Fishing or whaling, it goes to the whole community. You yep. take care of, you take care of the people. Where dependency is on each other, yep. and on your history, and on your yep. songs, your dances, yep. and your prayers, to carry you on and prepare yep. you for yep. anything that right. life is going right. to bring to you. When you took the whale. Uh, I went up there and there was a sign that said, kill a macaw, save a whale. Right. You know, there's a, there's a, a miscommunication about you know, these people that are trying to protect that whale out there that don't really understand our, us Indian people. Yeah. Well, I certainly think that government needs to stand up and do their part because we signed the treaty. They, they initiated the treaty with the macaws and with uh, the tribes of Washington, yep. and, and need, they need to follow and respect yep. what what was done with those treaties, and with all of the people coming into our area that have no understanding or watch TV and Walt Disney and love the whale, right, and, and right. they have no concept of where they're where they're getting their chickens from, even right, right. from the no, Safeway. No, it's just styrofoam and, and uh, you know plastic. Yep. And they don't yep. know that a life no. was taken and, they and think, are given so they that they can eat. They think water comes in a plastic bottle now. They don't know yeah. it comes from down yeah. there. Yeah, you know. Mother Earth and, right. and the sky. Yep. Of all what indigenous people worship. Yep. The wind, the rain, right. you know, right. the sky, the yep. earth. Our everything. tides when they come tides, in and yes. the tides when they go out. You yeah. know, we live with that every day. Yeah. You know. A lack of really understanding of, of indigenous people. Yep. But we have to do our part to let them know who we are. Yep. Hopefully, 
hopefully we just tell our story and, and the general public yep. will support you know what we're trying to do as Indian people. I sometimes think, would I go and tell them, right. you have to eat whale meat yeah, yeah. You, and then have thousands and thousands of people in, on the internet and the emails coming into their country telling them they better stop pulling carrots right out, yeah. you know, and ripping right. their roots right out yeah. of the ground. Poor carrots. Right. Well, anyway, I get kind of, <laughs> I kind of get carried away now, but, you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand. No. Right? no. They don't understand that, that, that as human beings, as native people, as hunters and gatherers, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with us taking a life through subsistence hunting because, you know, with that comes prayer, right. comes preparation, yep. and comes respect for the animals. Yep. We're not hunting the last one. No. Nope. We're not hunting, and we wouldn't. No. Nope. And um, so some people just don't, uh, just don't have a clue. Yep. And we are. We're the first environmentalist. We take care of the whales. Right, right. We sustain their lives and we sustain them trees. We sustain yes. everything around us. Yes. That and, was what we were all about. Right, and, and it's like we don't, we, we just take what we need. Yep. You know, it's like my, my grandmother tell me when we go down to the beach, you just take enough clams, just nope. what we're going to have for the next few days. We all go down there and nope. take three weeks nope. and only eat one day of nope. them. No. no, so you know we you know, we are and we do take care of our. Uh, I mean, we take care of our resources. And we know about yeah. sustainability. Yes, you know sustainability, well, absolutely. We don't go anywhere. We don't move. No. So we have to take care of our surrounding where we live. Right. You know when the whale comes through, yeah. when the salmon comes through. Right. You know all of our animals are, that, that that sustain our lives. Right. Macaws have lived in our area for thousands of years, and we always hunted whale. Yep. We weren't the ones to deplete the whale no. population. No. No. It's Yankee whalers. Yep. Yep. Our little canoes couldn't yep. compete with them. No. People talk about commercial whaling, that, oh, macaws just want to go commercial yeah. whaling. I say this to them. Well, once the United States government allows commercial whaling, where are our canoes going to be? Yeah. Right on the beach. Yep. Yeah, because we wouldn't be able to compete with the, no. the, the no. Yankee whalers of no. the 21st century. <laughs> oh no! Keith Johnson, I hope in our time we bring this back to Macau, yes. right here, and we celebrate like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keith. <laughs> Well, did you try some of that uh, muck tuck we had just a little while ago? Did you oh, try yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. I think they got some over there now, so we should go get another bite. <laughs> ah, let's go. Let's go get another bite. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Amber, but we always call her Naya by her Yupik name. And there's Wilson, he just turned six. And there's Rhea, and she's four. What I love about Kipnik is the way we live with the subsistence lifestyle. I, I love the salmon, I love the seal, I love, I love all the different foods I get to eat. One of the things I love about Kipnik is that you don't have to go to the grocery store all the time. This is our grocery store. We come here and we get salmon berries like this. If you squeeze them, but they have juice coming out. And this is what we, this is what we survive off of through the winter time. It's our ice cream dessert after we eat. With a pretty sweet taste. Our ancestors have been doing this for a long time. We're proud to continue to do so. My dad always tells me, when he's gone, all we'll have is each other. And so going together on boat trips like that and picking berries and harvesting different things, it, it builds us closer together. And it prepares us for the future because it, it teaches us that we have each other no matter what happens. Kipnak, it's a small community, a village. It's not really connected to the outside world, but I was always interested in what's going on all around us. I was curious about climate change and how it was affecting us. I didn't realize how bad it was. When I finally understood what climate change was, I thought, what could I do to help? I thought that would help a lot to tell my story of how we're being affected by climate change on this side of the world. If you know it's right in your heart, I told them, you know, don't be afraid to tell them. It's mostly about the winter coming late. The snow would usually come around September or October, but for the past years it's been coming around November. In December 2008, it was the worst flood that I remember. You could see all of this water just flowing swiftly into the village that way, and at the same time there was these huge ice sheets that were just coming in fast and heard these uh, loud thumps and bumps on the side of the house. And I figured that that was probably the ice, sheet, ice sheets that, that broke apart from the river that are hitting the house. Um, after the water went back into the river, there was just brown, sticky mud all over the ground and wherever the water touched. That mud was on top of these steps. One, two, three, and four. Floods in December are uncommon. The river is usually frozen all the way till spring. And also the erosion that we're facing here. The warmer temperatures are causing the permafrost to melt, and the permafrost to melt affects the land through erosion. So the erosion cuts off some land that falls into the river, and we lose quite a bit each year. This spring, my dad and I, we measured how far it was. This year, we lost about eight feet, and a few weeks ago, we lost another five feet. Yeah, we have another 40 or so feet left until the bank there reaches our house. If it keeps moving at the same rate, then in the next few years, then we might have to move our house to another location. It does scare me because we don't know if there'll be, if there'll be an ice pack or not in the future. But if there's not, then it, it would be much harder to harvest seal for our subsistence way of lifestyle, especially for the seal oil that we heavily depend on and as part of our everyday lives. The warmer temperatures could affect our way of life out here. And if we didn't get to come out here and do any of this with picking berries or any of that, it would be hard on our family, and not only my family, but all of the families in the community as well, because about 90% or so of our diet year-round is from the tundra or the ocean. And it would be hard economically. 
yeah, we're really dependent on, on all this food that we get and we're very thankful for it. <laughs> we're a small town that probably no one knows about, but I like to have our voices heard and letting other people know how much we are affected by climate change. I'm asking for help with how we're gonna deal with this. I'm involved with the Sitka Youth Leadership Committee. I'm also involved in Alaska Law Enforcement Cadet Corps, and I'm a certified apprentice firefighter. And I'm one of the Native Youth Olympic athletes. My name is Nelson Kanak and I'm 16 years old. My name in the Yupik language is Angutlak and it means strong and wise man.